We are so glad you've joined us today. We have some hot topics to bring you today, and also I think we may even have some special guests coming. Yes? In this program? Oh, it's going to be interesting. Yes. <laughs> this is like the classic Jewish staple program on the seventh feast of the Lord. Love it. See, if you watch our uh, program online, you get to see these very long episodes with very detailed explanations, but obviously television, we're shortened to smaller segments. Yeah. So uh, we're going back over a very popular classic teaching so that y'all guys can uh, be introduced to some of the things that people have already seen yeah. online. Pesach, Passover, and the Spring Feast of Israel, the feast that Yeshua fulfilled. And you're going to enjoy this because there's some extra family members involved. This was shot during the height of COVID during the lockdown. So we had a nice family Passover special just for you. Hey everybody, I'm Joshua. And I'm Caleb. We're brothers. That's true. Now, this is a little awkward for me because generally the producers of our show are much older. <laughs> it looks as though I'm staring into one of those, like, thing, those apps where it shows you as a baby because a couple of these kids look like me. There's a lot of little kids here, and we have bigger kids running our camera. This is our Hi, family. Kids. We, we decide to have a family Passover special. Okay, so in the book of Exodus, God sends Moses to the Pharaoh because the children of Israel were in bondage. They were slaves for 400 years. So God says, Moses, go let to the Pharaoh my people go and say, let my people go. That's what he said to him. He did. He said that. But the Pharaoh said to Moses, Let my people stay. Didn't happen that way. It was kind of like that, though. But he said, no, you're not going anywhere. Mm. So God was sending plagues, okay? He sent 10 plagues on Egypt. Does anybody know any of the plagues that God sent on Egypt? See? No? Yes, the plague of silence. That's no, right. not the plague. Uh, um, he? Frogs? Frogs, yeah. Yeah, good one. In? He the, also sent flies. Flies, flies okay, good. Yeah, good. The um, deaf angel. Deaf angel, okay, that's what I was looking for, the deaf angel. Ooh. So the last plague was the deaf angel. So that's why God said, you got to kill this lamb. A baby lamb, the sweet little baby lamb. The cute cuddly ones, the ones that y'all guys see in books. I know, he's but so soft and It was fuzzy. for a good purpose, don't worry. And you're going to take that blood and you're going to apply it to the doorposts of your home so that when the death angel came to kill the firstborn of any animal or human in all of Egypt, he wouldn't kill the Israelites. Mm -hmm. They would be protected, wouldn't they, Josh? They would be so protected. And so with that started the feast of Passover. Mm -hmm. And so God said, make unleavened bread. See this? This is unleavened bread, bread with no leaven, no yeast. So it was really hard like a cracker. Is it delicious? He said, eat bitter herbs to Ugh. remind you of your bitterness of Ugh. slavery. You want to eat this? No? Ooh, ooh. Oh, I know he would want that. <laughs> Smell but, good. But Don't do we it. We don't have any drink. You know, if it's yucky, then you're going to be spitting out. And roast the lamb. You're going to eat the lamb. And they were to have that meal. You're supposed to keep your shoes on your feet and you're going to have your belts on, your clothes on, because the very next morning you're ready to run out of Egypt because he's going to let those people go. Well, the deaf angel came. He was going to let my people go. He let the people go. Pharaoh finally let the people go. And that's why we celebrate the Passover today. So why is this feast so important, the feast of Passover? What was it to tell us about the future? Does anybody know why this feast is important to us today? Anybody at all. Anybody? Because we were all born perfect, and we were beautiful, uh -huh. and our mommies and daddies loved us, and we could go straight to heaven, right? <laughs> eh, that is the wrong answer. As a matter of fact, we were mm. all born sinners. That's right. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah, yeah. And we've all done bad things. That's right. And the thing is, is that we are in bondage to that because we're sinners, just like the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt. And so these feasts were to be foreshadowings, types to let you to know when the Messiah came, he was the one. So we had three feasts that were gonna show you that Jesus was coming, the Feast of Passover, in which he died on the Feast of Passover. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, he was buried on the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. And the Feast of First Fruits, in which he was resurrected on the Feast <coughs> of First Fruits. Some people call it Easter, we call it the Feast of First Fruits. And so those were very important types and shadows of things to come. In fact, Jesus took the position of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Yes. John the Baptist said that. He died for us and his blood was poured out to forgive us of our sins. On the Feast of First Fruits, Jesus was resurrected. He came out of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene is the first person to see him. And she wants to hug on to Jesus and hold on tight. But he says, no, 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 no. Hold on. 
Yeah. And in fact, in John 20, 17, is exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. Just in case you'll think my paraphrasing is a little inaccurate. <laughs> Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Mm -hmm. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So why was this important? Jesus, immediately after that, he went up to heaven. Okay, he went up to heaven and he had to finish the sacrifice. They say he was a Passover lamb. He was mm -hmm. killed but he still had to apply his own blood to cover our sins. He stepped into the role of a high priest. You know, there's a temple in heaven, and he went into that temple, into the holy place where there's a mercy seat in the Ark of the Covenant. He took his own blood, and he applied it to that to cover our sins forever. So here we have a temple. Oh my gosh. A model of King Solomon's temple. Look at why that. Would, why would God make a temple so small? This would have to be a <laughs> temple for ants to be able to go in there and receive freedom. It's a model made out of popsicle sticks by oh. E in the second grade. Most kids, you know, non-Jewish kids, they make the Eiffel Tower out of popsicle sticks, castles. Ours make King Solomon's Very temple. Very normal Jewish <laughs> baby right here in, in school. So if you guys look inside this temple, this is the Holy of Holies, and in there is the Ark of the Covenant. Well, can they look? Or are they going to get zapped? The mercy seat. No, they're not going to get zapped. Y'all are going to be okay. Oh, like model zapped? You get like static electricity shocked if it's just a model versus... And the important thing to know, guys, is the reason God gave specific dimensions for how to make the temple on earth is because the temple in heaven looked the exact same way. Mm -hmm. And we have proof that Jesus completed this sacrifice the way we just explained in the book of Hebrews, don't we, Josh? We do. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, Hebrews 9... Mm -hmm. 11 through 12 says, But when Christ came as high priest mm. of the good things that are not already there, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands. That is to say that it is not a part of the creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once and for mm. all by his own blood, thus mm. obtaining eternal redemption. So this Passover, guys, remember the things of old, the sacrifice of old, how the death angel passed over, because of the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of the house, now we have the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of our hearts. We do. And we don't have to fear the death angel. We don't have to fear coronavirus. We don't have to fear anything that's going on in the world because whether we're in our home or whether we're out in the world, we are safe and protected by the blood of Jesus. I had such a great memory today of when we used to use our kids on set that's for props. things. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> uh, really great having your kids with us in this segment. I, yeah. I love the kids' perspective um, teaching to them. Yeah, it, it changes everything, but the gospel was meant to be understood by children. Uh, it, it's simple, and, and Pesach, Passover, as Zola used to say, is the crown jewel of the Feast of Israel. This was the one that Yeshua came and he, he died and was buried and rose again on first fruits. And uh, obviously, in Christian churches, they celebrate differently with Easter, you know, it's, it's not and we know the Jewish interpretation. That, right. We know that people get bent out of shape because it was Ishtar's, you know, fertility festival yes. and this and that. But the focus being on Yeshua yeah. being raised is what we care about. But that's why it's so important to go over this teaching here. It right. is, and it's important to go over the teaching. But I love, I love seeing both of you. We know you as brothers. Yeah. I love seeing you as, oh, look at their touching, as <laughs> you like fathers. fathers. Yes. That's yes. right. And that was so very much Old Testament, but the whole yeah. Testament of share it, tell the young generation, that's tell right. the children. Think about before you had written word, that's how the, the word was handed right. down. Yeah. It was verbal. So the families for generations would sit and they would teach their children and their children would teach their children. And it's always an amazing time as a father, as a husband, to be able to sit with my kids and be like, this is the stuff that really matters. We all have schedules, we all have this, but what Yeshua did is what's going to mean everything for your life. That's, that's beautiful. Right. I love it. I love seeing you guys as dads. Well, thank you. And the next feast, Shavuot, most Christians know it as Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks. This has to do with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. I hope you enjoy this perspective. Hey everybody, I'm Joshua. And I'm Caleb. And we're brothers and this is Fiji. That's cool, Josh. You know, today we want to talk to you about Shavuot, the mm. Feast of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit. That was weird. Did you just hear that bleeping sound when we said holy sp That's not a bad word. Who's bleep? Usually I say all the bad words and we know that they bleep those out for sure. Guys, the Holy Spirit is not a swear word. Wait. <laughs> didn't, didn't, I heard the Holy Spirit died with the apostles. 
No, Josh. Just a diff different thing. Okay, okay. Shavuot, the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, we know about this, the fourth feast of Israel. It's an agricultural feast. This was fulfilled when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the earth. We read here in Exodus 32 that the children of Israel sinned against God. They were worshiping a golden calf. And the punishment was that 3,000 men were killed by Levites. Then Acts 2, 3,000 men and women came to the knowledge of Yeshua on the day of Pentecost. So this is awesome, Josh. But we don't just want to talk about the Feast of Pentecost, but what came on that day, the important baptism by fire that was prophesied throughout history. John the Baptist in Matthew 3:11, mm -hmm. I indeed baptize you with mm -hmm. water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm and fire. Oh, that's cool. See, Yeshua, before He ascended into heaven, He's on the Mount of Olives giving His disciples the last directive to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't want to leave His disciples empty-handed. He wanted them to have the same power and authority that the Father gave Him. So, He said in Acts 1, 4 through 5, and being assembled together with them, He, Yeshua, commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which He said, You have heard from Me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit many days from now. You're probably asking, yeah. what does that mean? What goodies come with it? What power? Yeah. What is it, Josh? Well, Mark 16, hmm. 17 answers that. It mm -hmm. says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. Mm -hmm. They will speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, mm -hmm. it will by no means hurt them. Yeah. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will, they will recover. Okay, and so the day of Pentecost finally came. We read in Acts 2, 1 through 4, uh, when the day had finally come, they were all together with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came the sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now Peter explained, this was prophesied in Joel 2.28, that this baptism by fire of the Holy Spirit would, would fill them, and this was kind of like a necessary part two for salvation. You got the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but then you got his baptism of the Holy Spirit. I think well, it was really cool that Peter did it. I think yeah. Peter coming off of denying three times <laughs> yeah, that's just, true. just so happens to stand up and give the very first church service, which did that's get 3,000 right. people saved that day. Mm -hmm. What, what an amazing moment to show that it wasn't Peter, it was the Holy Spirit. There was something different, like you said, a, a part two to salvation. See, salvation is important. The people go out and they, they, you know, tell them about Yeshua. Your spirit is reborn and rejuvenated, but your body is still this flawed human flesh. It still has that curse attached to it. And so this baptism of the Holy Spirit they talk about is a part of the fire, the incinerating fire of the Holy Spirit, burning away that chaff and those impurities so that you will not be inclined to sin and fall back into those same temptations of the flesh. You have to take steps mm. because, like you said, just, just because you get saved that day and have that great experience mm -hmm. doesn't mean that old patterns and other things of this flesh and, and yes. the Holy Spirit being mm. there to be that hall monitor mm. for you, to be like, <laughs> hey, yeah, don't say those words, the bleep of yes, sir, yes, sir. That's right. So you can see throughout Scripture uh, discovering this fire of the Holy Spirit was in Zechariah 13, 9, Malachi 3, 1 through 3, 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15, uh, the consuming fire of God in Hebrews 12, 29, uh, Psalm 104, 4, who makes his angel spirits, his ministers flames of fire. Like I said, this is to empower people. Um, How much does this cost? Is it very expensive? It was a free gift, Josh. Just like salvation, you received it by faith. You receive that baptism of fire by faith by asking the Father. It was a free gift. I don't know if you've noticed this or not yet, mm -hmm. but God has a very consistent pattern of which He gives things to you. Yeah. It's by your faith. That's true. It's really simple. He said, hey, you want it? Believe. Mm -hmm. And it's yours. It's just like that. That's right. In Acts 19, 1 through 7, yeah. the Bible says, And it happened mm. while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper mm. regions, came to Ephesus. Mm. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, mm. We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Mm. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Mm -hmm. Well, then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him mm. who come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When, when they heard this, they, they were baptized immediately in the name of Lord Jesus. And then Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, mm. and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. 
Now the men were about 12 in all. So that's interesting. This in the New Testament was the only sign uh, that you were a believer, that you're a Christian. Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit? This was letting him know that they had received Yeshua properly. And if they, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit, then they thought there was something wrong with them. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, it outlines that these gifts, uh, there's gifts of the Holy Spirit that God gives to us. And there's a diversity thereof that is meant for all believers, the church to function together in unity. That's pretty, That's cool. pretty powerful. That's right. Guys, the, the Holy Spirit is an integral part to your life as a believer. Mm. You can still go to heaven if yeah. you're not baptized in Him, but the things that it enables you to do, the intimacy with the Father, yeah. the awareness, everything is amazing. We read in 1 Corinthians, what we all have read before, yeah. that these giftings um, that have been given out are portions of apostle, prophet, teacher, healer, gift of tongues, there's all these things, but the greatest right. of all these gifts that is given out yeah. is love. That's right. It's greater than the Holy Spirit, it's greater than everything. So we wanna keep in mind and keep in check mm. that yes, Mm -hmm. The word Holy Spirit that got, kept getting bleeped out at the beginning. He is real. He is alive. He, he, he is living on the inside of you. That's right. But love should be the driving force mm -hmm. behind everything that we do, everything right. that we say. And if it's not, then... It doesn't matter if you have prophecy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you can speak in tongues. It doesn't matter if you can heal the sick. If you don't have love toward the people, toward the fellow man, to your neighbor, you're nothing. I wonder what else they might bleep. Josh, come come up with some words. What about... Uh, while the cameras were off, we were discussing this topic, and as Gentiles, we think it's a lot different than what the teaching is today, right? Right, because we grew up in the church. You grew up in the church also, but yeah. you grew up with a Jewish perspective. Yes. We did not. So what we've heard is the church is born, it's the beginning of the Christian church, Shavuot, yeah. and they don't even know the word Shavuot, it's just Pentecost. Mm. And we, again, cannot understand it if we don't understand the Jewish the roots. What was really happening right then? So tell us more. Tell us more. Well, <laughs> guys, this, even the Holy Spirit, everybody says, oh, here's the Christian Holy Spirit. You know, with the Jewish people, it's always the Father of the Father of the Father, you know? And then with Christians, it's the Son, and then you get the Holy Spirit. The three in one was always taught. You can see the three in one all over the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit was always there. It said, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon Samson. The Spirit of the Lord would come upon this prophet, and he would prophesy. Even Saul prophesied when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in the Old Testament. And so the, the power of the Holy Spirit is something that even Christians in the church today don't focus enough on. But that, that empowering is what we need to have as believers to overcome the trials of this world. We sing about that, yeah. but do we really grasp what we're singing about? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if we do because I know that in, in a lot of churches today, the, they will either say, well, all that power died with the, you know, the apostles, the, the apostles yeah. right. or they'll try to uh, create strategies in which we can utilize the Holy Spirit during this 60 minute segment and during this you know, 13 minute worship segment. Um, or and there, how he comes. Exactly, yeah. how right. he comes. He is a fundamental part of your, da of your daily life as a believer yes. in being successful in overcoming darkness. That's right, well, now we're gonna go to a very interesting teaching about the fall feasts. Three feasts that have not yet been fulfilled. They are prophetic. And uh, you're going to really enjoy this, but this is, this is a foretelling of important things that are going to happen for your life as a believer. Hey everybody, I'm Joshua. I'm Caleb. And why is there wheat all over my table? Yeah, it's the Jewish New Year. We're in the new... It's October. I know that much. It's oh, Jewish New Year. Hey, secular Jewish New Year. We're in the My New bad. Year season for the Jews. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, in the Bible, the New Year was uh, basically in the spring, but the secular time, Rosh Hashanah starts the New Year for the Jews. And we know that Zola has taught about the seven feasts, and we want to talk about the fall feasts. And we're going to sort of give an abridged version of that. With all the wheat. That's right. So let's, let's talk about the seven feasts that God ordained in Leviticus 23. Uh, three. The first four have been fulfilled in Messiah. We see the feast of Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits were fulfilled in the death, burial, and resurrection of Messiah. Then we see Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. Mm -hmm. That was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, you know, with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to the people. Is that all of them or are there more left? 
there's three feasts left. Three the more fall feasts. feasts. Now, these have yet to be fulfilled as a type and a shadow of Messiah yet to come. So we want to focus on them. Let's look at Rosh Hashanah. Let's do it. Rosh Hashanah is known as the Feast of Trumpets, or Yom Teruah. And on this day was the ceremonial blowing of the trumpet of the shofar uh, from the temple, and they offered sacrifices to the Lord. And as Zola has explained, this feast is a mirror or a shadow of a rapture of the church to come. Ooh, the rapture. Now, hold sure. on. That's going to happen after we all get blitzed by the Antichrist, right? No, 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 no. Let's read 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, the Bible says we will not know the day or the hour that this is going to happen. Only the Heavenly Father knows. But we are to know the season. Mm. It's the fall season, the last harvest of the year, the gathering of people from the earth is the harvest. Oh, okay. So just like you gather wheat, uh -huh. he's going to come gather the people for the harvest. Interesting. That's true. The next feast is Yom Kippur, the Ooh. great day of atonement. On this day, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, the only time he could go into there, and he would drip blood upon the mercy seat. He would offer sacrifices for the entire nation of Israel to have their sins forgiven. On this day in the future is going to be when the battle of Armageddon takes place, oh, when the crazy. Lord will judge the wicked. He will separate the sheep from the goats. It's an amazing time. It's, it's, an, amazing a, it's time, a scary an amazing time. Story. So are we going to be here at that point? Or are we, we need to look at more? We need to look at more. We'll get to that, Josh. Yes, we'll get to that. The anxious. next feast. I want to know when it's going to happen. The next feast, celebratory feast of Sukkot. The bad stuff is gone. Sukkot, the feast of tabernacles, the feast of booths. This is when uh, we remember our time in the wilderness, setting up tents and booths. And this is a feast of the beginning of the millennial reign of the Lord. And it's Leviticus 2341, right? Leviticus 2341. <laughs> I knew it. It declares that this feast is to be an everlasting statute, yeah. a memorial forever, that during the uh, millennial reign, that if the inhabitants of the earth don't go to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast, then God will shut up the heavens and they will not receive any rain. So can now we talk about the rapture and when it's going to happen? Now we can talk about, about the rapture. God. What if it was going to happen in six minutes and I didn't know? <laughs> so many things I'd want to do. Now we know the word rapture does not appear it's in not the Bible. There. It's, it's a taking away the gathering of God's elect. Mm -hmm. And uh, pre, a lot of people get into fear about this subject matter. They, they worry, they yep. know what's going to happen. Are we going to suffer the tribulation, all these, these terrible things on the earth? Let's read from the scripture. I'd like to read this if you don't mind. You First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11 mm -hmm. says, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the mm -hmm. night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. And as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in the darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Mm. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Mm. But let us who are of the day be sober, mm. putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, mm. oh, that was interesting, mm. but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you are doing. Wow, How come everybody always stops at the thief in the night and doesn't keep reading the scripture? Well, there's many a parables that say the Lord will come as a thief in the night, but they think that it's to us that we're going to be unawares at the Lord's coming. This scripture is telling us that we being the children of the light should not be caught unawares mm -hmm. of Messiah's return, that we should be aware. He wants us to be aware. He wants us to be watchful and to be ready to see when his return. We're not to be afraid of it. Let's look at Revelation 3.10. The Lord says, Because you have kept my word of patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial, which is coming on the whole world, to try those who dwell upon the earth. God was giving exhortation to the church of Philadelphia that he did not destine us for wrath, that we being his children mm. are not meant to endure what is called the wrath, the plagues, the bowls of wrath that are unleashed upon the earth during the tribulation. He wants to spare us. We take part in the marriage supper of a lamb during the tribulation. Uh, this time when we, when we marry Messiah, when we become one with him, and then at the end of the tribulation, we come down with him on white horses. We battle yes. Satan in the battle of Armageddon. It's going to be so awesome. I think that white horses are super cool. Johnny Cash even sang a song about that one time. I love it. Guys,
guys, here's the thing. My brother's pretty certain. So if y'all guys are taking some kind of like pool and having like a, uh, what is that thing with the football, fantasy football league, y'all can vote on him and it's probably a good idea. He studied it for a long time and it's God's word. But I think we're kind of missing the point when we, when we think about we just want worry to exhort and concern. You. Yeah, 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 we just want to exhort you. Calm down. We want you to be encouraged. Okay. These fall feasts have not been fulfilled. They're types and shadows of the things to come. Let's look at them with anticipation. Mm. Uh, let's be one of those ones who receive a reward for looking for the coming of the Lord. And, and be ready, be watchful, so you won't be caught unaware. Have the good intention, not that person who's just waiting to go, ha ha, I told you so. I like to be that guy sometimes. I'm not gonna lie, that's why he's staring at me. But look at all the wheat, time. it's beautiful wheat. It's tasty. We trust you're enjoying the teaching around this table. Not only at this table, we give you teaching from the Bearded Bible Brothers, but they will be on the bus with us when we go to Israel and on location everywhere we go. Guys, it's life-changing for not only our pilgrims, but life-changing for us too as we head there. I got to say, if you have questions for either of these guys, they're available breakfast, lunch, <laughs> and dinner, and throughout the whole day. And I don't understand why you're laughing. Write them down. You are so welcome. Get ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All day long, prophetic questions. But you guys have the answers. Well, guys, for this show itself, when you give an offering to us, we want to give you something in return. This book that Zola and Dr. Tom McCall wrote, The Bible Jesus Read, is from a Jewish perspective because Jesus read the Old Testament. And it answers a lot of your questions. It's really like the cliff notes to the Old Testament and it shows the messianic lineage through the whole thing. You can find Yeshua in this. All of these feasts that we've been delving into today were meant to reflect back to Yeshua. They were meant to get the eyes of the Jewish person to focus on Yeshua as their Messiah. Yeah. Right now, if you are watching this and you have not accepted Yeshua as your Messiah, as the one that is written about throughout the Word of God, who is the Son of God, who came and lived a perfect life fulfilling the law, dying, rose again on the third day, then now is the moment for you to accept him. I want you to pray with me right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son Yeshua. We ask for you to forgive us for our sins. We ask you to come into our heart and to live and rule in us forever. Thank you, Yeshua. It's as simple as that. Yes. I want to say this too. It's been great having your children <laughs> with us today yeah. and so much more to come. But guys, it's time to go. That's right. So as we always say, Shalu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Join us right now on our social media sites for exclusive content. Visit our website, levitt.com, for tour information, broadcast schedule, free monthly newsletter, and online store. Call us anytime at 1-800-WONDERS and ask about this week's resource. Our Jewish Roots is a presentation of Zola Levitt Ministries. As a 100% viewer-funded ministry, your gifts allow us to bring you our weekly television series, social media outlets, website, and other ministry endeavors. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you.